We're now going to have a look at using the internal speaker on the Wii Remote. Now currently, there is no program that I know of, I could be mistaken, but there's no program that I know of at the making of this tutorial that actually allow you to play WAV files through the internal speaker on the Wii Remote. Um, I don't think you can do that at the moment. I know it's possible because on the Wii itself, you get WAV files played through the internal speaker. But currently, the only thing you can do with it is output certain frequencies and alter the volume of that frequency. So, let's have a look. Now, we're going to get straight to this and go Wii Remote 1 dot frequency, I'll say 1500. Wii Remote 1 dot volume, I'm going to set it to 40%. So, put a percent sign in the end, 40%. And you should hear it when I run this. There you go, you can hear that. But, that's not good enough. I want to be able to change it while using the Wii Remote, while running the script, should I say. So here's where variables come in. Now, if you've no idea what a variable is, just think of as a... We've, you've already pretty much used them in the sense that the keyboard.a is a variable. It's either true or false, but that's the only data it can store. Some variables, though, can store numbers. Some can store letters. So we're going to create a, basic, uh, a, a very basic variable. And I'm going to go that the Wii Remote 1 dot frequency equals var dot, and then pick a name that you want. I'm going to go for F R E Q for frequency. It's just a short abbreviation. And the var dot means it's a variable. And if I run this now, you're not going to hear anything because currently the variable var dot frequency contains the data of zero. So I want to be able to increase it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Wiimote, sorry, I'm going to go var dot frequency is going to equal ten. Var, sorry, it's going to equal var dot frequency plus ten. Now I know you're learning quite a bit here. So basically I'm adding ten to the pre previous frequency. So, what will happen? I'll show you what happens when I run this. Now, you would have heard the pitch increase and increase. Now, that is because this actual script that you see is run as fast as it can be. It's, it's running in a constant loop and the keep, keep same code is run over and over and over again. So let's look what happens. The first time through it adds 10 into the value of VOR frequency, which when it starts off contains 0, so you add 10 to it, it contains 10. Then the Wii Remote 1, in this case, the frequency that is outputting through the speaker is set to that variable VOR frequency, which contains 10, so it's set to 10. Then it plays it. Then the next time through it adds another 10 onto the same variable, it makes it 20. It then sets the frequency of the remote to 20 and plays the sound. Then the next time through it adds another one, makes it 30, plays that, and so on and so on, 40, 50, 60, and so on. And it goes to the different frequencies. So that enables you to increase the frequency. And again, you could actually make it work faster if we made it 100. And you'll notice it, it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. And because we know that's because of the, the wave and the way that sound travels and the, the way that sound is. And also the way the script wrote. But that's very basically how the internal speaker works. Now, I might go on and show you if statements later on. Well, actually, I will go on and show you if statements later on. When I end up explaining if statements, you can actually set it so that if the key's pressed, or certain key's pressed, then increase the frequency. If a, another key's pressed, decrease the frequency. If another one's pressed, increase the volume, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's just some basic scripting using the Wii Remote that you've learned so far, and the, the volume. Um, from this point on, we're going to be looking a bit more heavily at coding and scripting. We're going to be looking at if statements, um, while loops as well, and as I've already mentioned later on, we'll be looking at emulating fake fake joy pads using a nice plugin called PP Joy. If you look that up, you'll find some useful information on that, and GlovePy supports that as well. And it's 
just a bit of a warning, it is going to get a bit more complicated from really from this point onward.